Doing business in China has been highly profitable for many U.S. companies, but now some CEOs are asking how long that's going to last as Beijing changes its rules to give a boost to its domestic companies. That's the subject of this week's cover story in the latest issue of Bloomberg Business Week. It hits newsstands this morning. For more, we are joined by the magazine's deputy editor, Eric Pooley. Eric, so glad you could come in and talk to us about this. We talk a lot about the national tension between China and the U.S., but with your research, you've even shown it's very much at a local level with Western business leaders being poorly received on the ground. Well, it's true, Deirdre, because for years, Western executives could expect a very hearty welcome when they traveled uh, to the provinces in China. That's changing uh, a bit because uh, not long ago, uh, executives from General Electric and, and many other Western companies, I think 12, uh, went to Wuhan and they were having what they thought was going to be a traditional banquet uh, with, the, with the local mayor uh, who canceled the day of the event. Uh, uh, other top officials canceled another event the same day. Uh, and there was speculation that word had come down from Beijing uh, to, uh, to to cool it with the Americans. Now, why would China's this be going? Part, I was going to say is that they said they did send officials, just not the ones who were supposed to be there. Exactly, they sent apparently lower level officials. Now, Western companies are very careful about talking about this on the record because they don't want to make things worse for themselves. But what's going on here is what we're calling the new protectionism. While a lot of attention has been focused on Google's problems with censorship. There's a much broader uh, uh, trend going on, and that is, as you said, China uh, putting up new trade provisions, uh, new patent laws, and new local procurement provisions called indigenous in innovation that shuts out foreign manufacturers. Let's take the $14 billion a year wind turbine market. GE, Vestas, and other big foreign players uh, fear that they're being shut out of that by so, rules that say that the Chinese me, government has to buy Chinese. Let, let me ask you then, why would China's government have welcomed all the Western and Japanese companies to their grounds if they were just going to shut them out, I don't know, 10 years later? Well, here's, here's the thing. It's 10 years after the WTO, and China is now doing a bit of a rethink. Um, they're saying that the open door policy that they famously had for years uh, has not succeeded in boosting local champions. There are a few. You think about Lenovo. You think about Huawei. But, you know, who's vying for top spot in Chinese uh, auto business? Well, it's, it's Volkswagen and General Motors. Um, uh, you know, they want to capture a larger part of their, of their value chain. They want to make more money from what they're producing. I want to shift gears. I know that's the cover story. We're very interested in it. But you also did a great story about Eddie Lampert being hailed as the next Buffett. But now, as it turns out, a few years later, he's not the next Buffett. Well, um, what is he doing wrong? Well, five years ago, Business Week uh, called him the next Buffett. Uh, he had just made this great merger of Kmart and Sears to create Sears Holdings that Business Week uh, speculated would be the next Berkshire Hathaway. Not just a great retail play, not just a great uh, real estate play, but also a vessel for all of these acquisitions that Eddie Lampert was uh, going to be making. Then came the crash. Uh, the acquisitions haven't happened. Uh, Sears has had uh, declining sales five years running, uh, and it looks like what Eddie Lampert is stuck with is a declining retail empire uh, that hasn't turned into a great financial play. So, so how much longer is Lampert going to stay where he is, in other words, before another activist investor knocks him out? Well, it's hard to see how he gets out of this unless there's a huge rebound in the, re in the real estate market because he's sitting, on, he's sitting on a lot of real estate that nobody wants, and so we say he's stuck with Sears, and we'll see how he gets out of it. He's a great hedge fund manager. So far, not a great retailer. So now that this sort of veil of Buffettness or future Buffettness has been shredded, I mean, how much longer, honestly, can he hold on? Well, he can he can hold on. Um, Just because nobody else wants to yeah, deal with it? Yeah, because how does he get out of it without taking a bath? That's the real question. All right. We thank you very much, Eric. That was uh, two excellent stories. Be sure to pick up the magazine later on today. That is Eric Pooley of Bloomberg Business Week.